When I became a Christian back in 1995, I slowly gravitated into political activism and I began supporting many of the well-known religious organizations that operate in Washington. I thought that it was my duty to save America from the forces of evil, and that would only happen, so I thought, by electing the right people into office. From mayors to governors, from congressmen to senators, and of course, the big one, getting a conservative Republican in the White House who would nominate conservative judges to the Supreme Court. I did that for several years until I became disillusioned with the whole movement. Hundreds of millions of dollars were being poured into political campaigns each year, but when many of the conservatives were elected, they immediately began to compromise their positions, and many times they became even more corrupt than the people they defeated. Also, when I began researching many of the leaders in the religious right, it became clear that many held to dominion theology, and many were ecumenical in their practices. Dominionism and ecumenism are not just unbiblical, they're from the pit of hell. So-called evangelical leaders thought nothing about being unequally yoked with Roman Catholics, Mormons, and the like, because since they all agreed that abortion, homosexuality, pornography, etc., were all evil and plunging America into the abyss, then it was only natural for them to join forces with their ideological allies to fight those battles. However, scripture could not be any clearer. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. The gospel of Jesus Christ was compromised when all of those varying groups joined together in political activism. Because if the so-called evangelicals had ever told their Catholic and Mormon allies the truth, that they would go to hell if they did not believe on the true Jesus of the scriptures, and not their false Jesus and false work salvation gospels, then the entire movement would have blown up in their faces, and groups such as the Moral Majority, Christian Coalition, Family Research Council, and the rest would not have had the funds or the clout in Washington that they enjoyed for many years. With so much emphasis on political activism, I watched with much disappointment as Christians allowed themselves to become political pawns. And sadly, many Americans see us as nothing more than an arm of the Republican Party instead of ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And because of that, we have lost our testimonies, and many unbelievers will not so much as give us the time of day or listen to what we have to say concerning the way of salvation. We have greatly, greatly erred in this matter. It must also be said that even though billions have been spent over decades on political activism, America has not turned to God, but she has become more godless wicked, immoral, and evil over time. Take a look at all the issues that the religious right has fought for or against over the years. Abortion, homosexuality, gambling, pornography, abstinence education, prayer in schools, school choice, creationism, etc. There may have been a few successes along the way, but they were only temporary. Abortionists still murder 1.2 million babies each year. Pornography is rampant throughout the culture. The gambling industry is bigger than ever. And just a few days ago, the United States Supreme Court legalized so-called homosexual marriage. We have become as wicked as those during the time of Noah and during the time of Lot. And without a doubt, the religious right and its activism has failed to stem the tide of evil. Why? Because they, we, have been using carnal weapons to fight a spiritual battle, and the devil and his minions have been laughing at us the entire time. So, what should our game plan be from here on out? Well, first, let us be faithful ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, by telling sinners to be reconciled to Christ. Now is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month or next year, but now is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Tomorrow is promised to no man. James chapter 4, verse 14. The gospel, and not political activism, is what Christians need to be preaching. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is this world's only hope, and not conservative politicians or judges. When sinners come to the foot of the cross in humility and are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, God the Holy Spirit will then take up residence in their lives and the lifetime work of sanctification, being conformed into the image of Christ, will begin. Romans 8, 29, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 11, 1 John 3, verses 2 and 3, and others. The Holy Spirit working in a person's life will do more wonders than any political party or activism can ever do. Second, let us redeem the time because the days are evil. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. We should be living lives of holiness and righteousness because we are living in days of corruptness and rank evil. And as believers, we should be shining as bright lights in a dark and putrefying world. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. This age of grace is coming to a close, and the opportunities for worship, witness, and service to our King will soon come to an end. Let us make our time on earth count. Third, we should pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Our prayers should always be in the Spirit, that is, inspired and led by God. Prayer should be a habit and not an isolated act. Our prayers should be deliberate, but at times they should also be spontaneous. Our prayers should consist of praises to our God, but also thanksgiving for His bountiful mercies. Brethren, prayer is a Christian's direct hotline to God. He is never busy, and as soldiers in His spiritual army here on earth, we must always be in communication with the captain of our salvation. Many more instructions could be given, but joining the various political parties and battles to save this country and the world is not one of them. The United States and the rest of the world are heading for certain judgment, and no amount of political activism will save this sinking ship. Remember, the gospel is the only cure for this sin-sick, snake-bitten world, and whoever looks to the cross of Christ and believes on Him in simple faith, whether they be abortionists, homosexuals, lesbians, fornicators, adulterers, idolaters, murderers, drug users, thieves, drunkards, blasphemers, and the rest. Whoever looks to him in simple faith and believes the gospel will be saved. Preach the word. Preach the gospel. God bless.